Today we're going over building from source. One of the most powerful things about any Linux distribution is the ability to build from source. Now I've done this video in the past, but I wanted to redo it because there's something I do pretty much every single week, if not every month, is build from source. And you might ask, well, why? There's repositories, there's other people that go ahead and package it all up into a nice binary to where you can install it. Well, a lot of times I just really enjoy being on the bleeding edge. When the developer's committing the code to GitHub, I literally can compile it as soon as he commits it. That means I don't have to wait for someone to create a package. I don't have to wait for someone to make that program available to me. I can just install it and go. And uh, on the flip side of this, some Archbase users watching this will probably go, well, I got the AUR, it does it for me. And you're not wrong. <laughs> Arch is great for building from source. Um, and that's why a lot of people love Arch Linux. You know, I think it gets lost that the install is very complex or cumbersome at the very beginning. But uh, when it comes to building from source, Arch Linux does a great job, but that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it uh, is it does keep it pretty simple for the average user, but a lot of people get in trouble by using it because they don't understand what Arch is doing. And uh, in that regard, I'm going to actually use Linux Mint in this video and build a project directly from it. Like OBS Studio right now in Linux Mint is using a rather old version, almost a, probably about a year old at this point. And I want to use the version that's out right now, but there's no binary, there's no repository for it. So uh, let's do it. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop in to my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. All right, let's start the build from source. Now I'm gonna be using OBS Studio because guess what? It has literally updated like every day. I could literally build this twice a day and I think I'd get a different result each time. Uh, you'll see that we already have commits from two hours ago. That's how often this project is updated. And it is an absolute glorious. This is where the future of streaming and pretty much all online streams come from, in my opinion. And most of those will probably be running on Linux in the future just for the stability of it. And uh, as I look through here, you'll see they do have like binaries and things you can actually download and install. So we could actually download these entire versions if we didn't want to just pull it directly from the repo. So if you want a little more stable build, and this one was uh, done 17 days ago, you could actually just download it from here, but that's not what we're going to do today. So we're going to actually pull all the source code instead of pulling it from the zip file. We're going to pull it directly from the repository and build what the developers have actually put in right now. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, every GitHub project when building from source typically has installation instructions. And OBS team probably one of the best ones on the planet because they have build instructions for every single uh, basically Linux distribution out there. So that, that's why I love them. You see, you can build it from Windows, you can build it from Mac, you can build it from all these different ones in Linux. Uh, so we're gonna build from source and we're gonna say Debian based. This is Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. So <laughs> it's all Debian based, it's all the same. So we'll just copy and paste all this. So first off, every build from source, you have to install dependencies. And that's what these are. This basically allows you to build from source. So uh, everyone's a little different on this one, but we're gonna go ahead and install all these dependencies. So we'll pull up our terminal. And we're gonna just go ahead and paste all this in. And we'll hit yes and let this update. All right, and our installation is done. We'll come back into our instructions. Now that we've installed all these packages with no errors, we can go into building uh, this. So there's two different ways, two different build cycles. This one is a browser source. This allows you to input uh, certain things. I use this streaming for, for Twitch. So I do use browser sources because I use stream elements that pulls in all the alerts and all the fun stuff. Uh, so I always build with browser sources. But if you're just pulling in like a camera or something that doesn't need to actually pull in a web page, obviously you, you probably don't want that extra uh, step. So we're gonna build with the browser source though because I do want that. So 
We can copy and paste all this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go line by line and just kind of show you what's doing, what it's doing. So first we'll just grab these two lines as this is grabbing basically the browser source that it's, I just went over and we're gonna install that. So the first one, anything that would wget goes and downloads a package from the internet. This is like going to a web page and actually downloading uh, this, this package. Uh, tar-xjf is, is basically extracting uh, this right here. We'll go ahead and extract. This goes through and just unzips that package. Uh, going to the next line, we're doing a git clone for the next line. This clones the whole repository. This downloads all our source code right into the OBS Studio directory. All right, with that finished, we now have everything in there. If we do a listing, you'll see we now have an OBS Studio directory. So we're gonna actually CD change directory into OBS Studio. And from here, let's go back to our instructions. You'll see we need to make directory MK directory build and then change the directory to build. So let's go ahead, make a directory build, and then we're gonna just change directory into build. Now we're done with that step. Next up is to do the CMake. And CMake right here, we'll go ahead and copy this. And this basically just goes in, makes the whole thing. You'll see that we now have this CEF binary. This basically just says, hey, uh, while you're building this, also grab this browser source. We need that in there as well. So uh, let's go ahead and make this with CMake. Now the CMake's done. It basically gets it ready. Now we need to actually make the package. Now, when using the make command, you'll notice we have make J4. This tells us to use four threads. So this is very important. If you do an HTOP, you'll see how many threads your system has. Mine actually has six threads. This is a six core system. So I can actually quit out. Once quitting out, uh, we can paste that in. But instead of using four, let's use six threads. This is gonna make it faster. Uh, I actually have a 2700 on my other system and that has 16 threads. So when it comes to building stuff, I really prefer that system because it builds just so stinking fast. But you'll, you'll notice this uh, little six core system here does a pretty beefy job as, as building this as well. Uh, this is a newer Intel chip, uh, so it does have a pretty high clock and it'll burn through this project and actually make it in relatively short time. All right, with all the package actually built now, we can actually go ahead and go to the final command here. And if we look, it's basically just doing a check install and looking at this, it'll actually go ahead and install it as well. So uh, let's go ahead and run this. And we'll just paste this in. Goes ahead, checks the install, installs it. Uh, right now it's just copying things to the temporary directory. Uh, from the temporary directory, it makes a DEB package. Now you're probably familiar with actually downloading and installing those, uh, which most times you go to a website, download the DEB package, double click it, hit install and it's done. Well, this is basically doing the same thing. It's just, we're the ones building the DEB package, which is kind of cool. Uh, you'll actually see this stored in the build directory as well. So we can actually do a listing once we're actually done with the installation. Uh, don't delete these files or this build uh, because if we ever need to uninstall or re-reference this package or that DEB package we actually use to install it, uh, it's just nice to keep it keep it on hand. So that's why I always keep my builds when I finish building. I always leave them in a build directory and uh, make sure I never delete these uh, because it's kind of important to at least have a reference point. We are done. Um, and now it should finish building the Debian package and install it. If this succeeds, you'll see a full installation successful here at the end with the OBS. And you'll notice, there we go. Everything looks good. Uh, done, the new package has been installed and saved to, this is that DEB package I talked about, to the build directory, which we're currently in. So if we do a listing, you'll notice we have made this build directory with today's date. This is literally commits that happened two hours ago. So we're some of the only people in the world with the bleeding edge of OBS. So uh, I just kind of want to show that. We'll go ahead and exit out of our terminal. 
And we'll go ahead and close this out and we'll launch OBS and you'll get to see the latest and greatest, literally the latest and greatest, uh, as most people uh, will not be running this package of OBS. So right here, you can see that it's running a version 25.0.7 sub version 108, uh, which is kind of cool. So you get this as far as uh, a build. I, I just, I don't know what it is about this. I absolutely love building OBS. It's probably the cleanest build from source I can think of. And that's building from source. Now you have the power to create any program you want within reason. Sometimes building from source doesn't go as smooth as this. I really compliment the OBS team for one, having a great GitHub, having great instructions. Uh, these make a big difference because I have had problems where that wasn't well documented and that meant building from source was considerably harder than it went in this video. But I just wanted to showcase this because this is something I do often uh, just because I like to see the absolute bleeding edge because when it comes to streaming and all the things going on uh, whether you're on twitch whether you're on whatever uh, i think honestly the future is streaming on linux because once you have the the stability of linux coupled with software that works great in linux that's free and open and has every feature that's available for windows and you got your little stream deck over here oh it's it's fantastic so th that's why i build all the time because i see it as the future and i feel like i'm living in the future when i'm using it so uh i know that's a little cheesy but with all that said let me know your thoughts down in the comments section and as always thank you to all my patrons without you i couldn't make videos like this one and i'll see you in the next one